Channel Sports Central, we go over our next team projection of this offseason, and it's going to be for the Kansas State Wildcats, the team that went 4-6 and six in the 2020 season overall. Um, it was a good season for Kansas State. This team started out the season really well uh, with a 4-1 and one record, but of course, in the second half of the season, things kind of fell apart uh, for Kansas State. But how will this team be in 2021, and will there be improvement for Kansas State, or will this team be a dark horse? Channel Sports Central will be going for our next team projection of this offseason. And it's going to be for the Kansas State Wildcats, a team that went 4-6 and six overall in the 2020 season. Overall, not a terrible season for Kansas State. Obviously, this team uh, played very well at the start of 2020. This team was 4-1 and one overall uh, in their first five games, and they had beaten Oklahoma in those first five games as well. Uh, but heading into the second half of the season, things did not go so well for Kansas State. This team kind of fell apart uh, down the stretch. But how will this team be in 2021? And is Kansas State a Big 12 dark horse going into next season is what we're going over here today. We're going to go over a few players that Kansas State will be losing, who they'll be returning, and also look at their schedule for the first time this offseason, starting out with the previous six games for uh, Kansas State, which... I mean, once again, this team was 4-6 and six overall last season, which the record makes it look like it was a terrible season uh, for K-State. But this team actually played very well in their first five, in their first six games. I mean, this team, yeah, they beat Kansas 55-14, to 14, but that was kind of the end of the good season for this team. Uh, they lost West Virginia on the road 10-37. to 37. I mean, really after that Kansas game, I'm not sure what happened to this team, but they just fell apart. Uh, they lost Oklahoma State 18-20. to 20. That was a close uh, close loss there. And then they completely fell apart um, after a week off um, in Ames. They lost that game 45 to nothing. Uh, didn't even score in that matchup. Lost to Baylor by one. That was a tough one there, 31 to 32. Also lost to Texas, uh, 31 to 69 in your final game of the season. So K State overall, once again, start off the season four and one. Last five games, this team was 0 and five. So uh, they did not win any of their last five games. Just a tough season for this team, I'll be honest. I mean, four and six is a decent record. That's not terrible. I mean, this team was ranked for a lot of the beginning parts of the season. Uh, and this team really looked like a potential contender, but it just once again, uh, it just did not go too well for this team in the second half of the season. But looking at your roster preview going into next season, of course, uh, your top two quarterbacks last season were Will Howard and then Skylar Thompson. Uh, your primary quarterback was Will Howard last season. He overall had more passing attempts than he uh, played the majority of the season. Um, overall, I mean, his stats were not terrible. He put up over 1,100 yards, eight touchdowns. Uh, he did throw more interceptions than touchdowns, which is definitely a negative factor there. He threw 10 interceptions um, against eight touchdowns. And he also had a 54% completion rate, which that completion rate is not very good. I mean, any, anything below 60, I'd say, is not a very good completion rate. And Will Howard was below 60. He was at 54. So uh, not too good of a season for him when he did play, but he was the primary quarterback. Uh, Skylar Thompson did not play a whole lot last season. But looking at Skylar Thompson, uh, he put up just over 600 yards, four touchdowns. Good stats for him overall last season. He put up some pretty good stats. His quarterback rating was 165. Uh, he put up a 63% completion rate as well, uh, which, I mean, that's only through 64 attempts of passing. So, I mean, it makes it makes his stats look a whole lot better that way. But um, either way, I mean, just both quarterbacks, I definitely think, uh, played decent when they both were playing last season, but Will Howard will be the quarterback coming back, and he is more than likely going to be uh, your primary quarterback going to next season. Expect him to take the majority of the snaps, um, obviously. But then he got Deuce Vaughn. He's coming back. Uh, looking at him, he put up just over a thousand yards, nine touchdowns. Good season for him. He was definitely a big impact on this offense last season. Put up some great stats. Watch out for him next year. He's going to have a huge impact on this team. Harry Trotter's not coming back. He put up just. Uh, just right below 300 yards and then three touchdowns last season. So, I mean, Deuce Vaughn, expect him to get a ton of attention next season. Uh, they lose their tight end and their top receiver, Briley Moore. Uh, he will not be coming back to K-State next season. Put up just over 330 yards last year. As for your top wide receiver, Taylor, he's coming back. Uh, that's going to be a big return there. Put up just over 300 yards as well. And then you got Malik Nowels. He's coming back. Uh, he was their second wide receiver um, last season, putting up just over 300 and. Uh, five yards and then four touchdowns. So you got your two, your yeah, your top, uh, your top two wide receivers. They're both coming back, but you are losing uh, your really good tight end. Briley Moore was a huge impact player uh, for Kansas State last season. That will be a tough loss there. As for the defensive line, you lose two on there, two linebackers, two in the secondary as well. So the defensive side loses six, um, six starters for next season. That is going to be pretty tough uh, moving forward for uh, for K State. I mean, most most defenses lose, I'd say, three to four players in off season. So. Losing six is definitely above average, but 
I mean, once again, this team definitely still has got some good potential going to next season. I think Will Howard, I mean, once again, he did not play as well as he could have last season. His completion rate was uh, pretty terrible. But I definitely think Will Howard, I mean, with an offseason, this is a player that's very young right now, and he's still got a ton of potential moving forward. I like Will Howard. I mean, it was only his first season last year. He played nine games. Um, and I think Will Howard overall has definitely got some potential going to next season. He'll be a fun player to watch. I understand he did not play very well last season when he did play for K-State, but, I mean, he's got potential. I mean, hear me out here. He, he does have potential, and I definitely think, I mean, if Will Howard plays well, so will K-State. Uh, yeah, chances of improvement in 2021, once again, will heavily depend on the quarterback situation. But for Kansas State here, I mean, this team has got potential of improvement, but, I mean, they just... They just can't fall apart like they did at the end of the last season. And injuries are a major part of that. Like this team, if they can stay healthy, they will be a good team next season. But potential Big 12 dark horse, once again, you got to really win um, those games that you're supposed to win. You can't be losing any terrible games. Like you can't be getting shut out by Iowa State 45 to nothing. You just can't do that if you want to be a Big 12 title contender. Uh, so for K-State, this team's got a lot of potential, but... I mean, if this team is a Big 12 dark horse, they've got a lot of work to do. Uh, but looking at your schedule for next season, I mean, overall, you don't have a terrible schedule. I mean, you do have to play, obviously, Oklahoma, Iowa State, um, and Texas, and all them teams. But, I mean, your non-conference schedule is not terrible. I mean, you got Stanford, a Power 5 game there in a neutral location. I got Southern Illinois, Nevada um, as well, which, I mean, I would say that's not too terrible. I mean, you don't have a terrible non-conference schedule. But looking at it otherwise, you got Oklahoma State on the road. You got Oklahoma as well. Then you got Iowa State. So, those three games in through there are going to be tough. You got Texas Tech on the road as well. Who knows? They can be pretty good. TCU should be pretty good. Uh, then you get a kind of a break there with Kansas on the road, West Virginia, Baylor. All three of those games I definitely favor Kansas State right now. And then you got Texas on the road to finish up the season. So you've got a brutal stretch in your October. Your October's just going to be completely tough, filled with tough games uh, from Oklahoma State to TCU. All five of those games are going to be pretty tough. Uh, but looking at the first six games here, Stanford, that's going to be a close one. I probably favor K-State right now. Um, I'm going to keep that as a yellow game. Southern Illinois, Nevada, both wins. Oklahoma State and Oklahoma will both be uh, pretty close matchups. I'd probably favor Oklahoma. I think we all can favor Oklahoma in that matchup. Even though Kansas State, I mean, this Kansas State team has actually had a lot of success uh, with Oklahoma in the past couple of years. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I know, I mean, I, I know obviously Kansas State beat Oklahoma last season, but I think... I mean, once again, I may be wrong here, but I think Kansas State has beaten Oklahoma two uh, years in a row. So, I mean, at Kansas State, this is a team that has had some success against Oklahoma. And with having uh, that game at home um, in Kansas State, in Manhattan, that could be a potential trap game there for Oklahoma. I mean, once again, it's Kansas State is kind of the tricky team that Oklahoma's um, had to play over the past couple of seasons. We've seen some big upsets there uh, with the matchups with Oklahoma and Kansas State. So, who knows? That could be a win, but I definitely got to favor Oklahoma right now. They're going to be a national contender next season, and I don't see Spencer Rattler letting up anytime soon. Iowa State's going to be a tough one as well. I mean, it's going to be tough having Oklahoma and Iowa State in back-to-back -back games. Good thing is you do have a bye week in between um, the Oklahoma and Iowa State games. As for the second half of your season, you got Texas Tech and TCU then. Uh, both those games are going to be pretty close ones. Kansas is going to be a win. West Virginia is going to be close. Baylor's going to be a win as well. And, of course, you finish out the season with Texas on the road. Should be a close one there as well. So, ceiling for Kansas State will be 9-3. and three. Your projection will be 7-5. and five. Uh, Then your floor is going to be 5-7 and seven next season. So, I've got this team making it to a bowl game. And I think, I mean, this team is definitely more likely than not to make it to a bowl game. I mean, I once again, I see this team getting up to 6 or 7 wins next year. But your floor will be 5-7. and seven. So, there is that chance that you do miss a bowl game. I do think, once again, though, uh, this team is pretty likely to make it to a bowl game. But... I mean, there's always that little chance that this team just is injured and just can't get anything done, and this team does miss a bowl game. But I think this team makes it. 7-5 uh, and five will be a projection next season. But let me know your thoughts in the comments below on Kansas State. I appreciate you guys all watching. Stay tuned for more from All Sports Central. I'll see you guys later.